Hello friends and welcome to my channel if you're new or welcome back if you are back. Either way, thank you so so much for clicking on my channel today. If you are new, hi, my name is Rabbit and my pronouns are they, them. And if you're back, welcome back. Today I look a little bit different perhaps because I'm trying to do like a toxic Molly cosplay. For those of you who might not know who that is, she is a Living Dead doll. Living Dead dolls are a series of, I don't know how many inches, but they're like this big if I remember correctly, a series of dolls that I think were made in like 1998 that are still being produced today and they're all based on kind of like spooky horror stuff. Um, so I'll put a little picture of the gal that I am trying to cosplay here. She's super cute, has an adorable little dress, this little gas mask, all this like red eye makeup and like bruising around her mouth so that's what I'm trying to emulate. Also like red ribbons and I know my dress isn't very accurate but don't worry about it. So really quick I want to talk a little bit about Living Dead Dolls. If you want to skip through that feel free. Basically how this came about was the first ever doll brand that I remember being into was Living Dead Dolls. I wasn't a doll person when I was a kid. I was really into stuffed animals but really not dolls um, and I was like kind of a very gothy spooky teen in my early teen years. I found out about Living Dead Dolls and I just like thought they were the coolest thing ever and I like begged my parents for one and then one Christmas my mom got one for me and I was just like reminiscing about that a while ago and thinking about this video that I want to make about like alternative fashion doll lines and just general alternative and like edgy and like goth and spooky doll lines. So in preparation for that video I was just going through the Living Dead Dolls website I'm scrolling through because on it you can read everyone's little death poem um, if you don't know about the dolls for the most part they're all based on like little characters of like little kids and stuff that have died so all of them come with like a little poem about what happened to them. I found this collector's book about them secondhand and just was like really loving looking through them. They're super inspirational for just like future doll projects and customs that I'd like to make one day. So for instance, like one of the first living dead dolls was this little guy called the Egg Exorcist. <laughs> And um, their poem says, A drawstring used to fasten years of a rabbit put this little bunny in a kitty casket. They're super cute, all just like based on like little horror figures. Super fun for like, yeah, inspiration and just in general, I think the concept of them is amazing. In looking into them, I've like found so many that I was like, wow, these are amazing. And then looking them up on like eBay and stuff, I was like, wow, these are completely out of my price range. And if I have to be completely honest with myself, I really prefer more like adult sized dolls. Like they're done, not on baby doll bodies, but like those kind of toddler doll bodies. And I just, those don't really do it for me. I really, really prefer more like fashion dolls on like traditional kind of adult bodies. So my solution to that was like, well, I don't really want to spend $300 on a doll that I don't like completely adore, but I do love the concept of this one so, so much, this one being Toxic Molly, that I decided to make like a little monster high half custom of her. I say half custom because I didn't do her face because she's gonna be wearing her gas mask like 90% of the time that I'm displaying her anyway so I figured there's not really a point. This tutorial is just gonna be on how I made the gas mask so um, if you're interested in like the rest and stuff I have other videos where I show how to make doll dresses and doll socks and that kind of thing and for the shoes I used a tutorial that I will link below that I found absolutely amazing but first let's take a look at my little Molly. I find her so cute and yeah this character design is just impeccable. I love the idea of like a cutesy little girl in like an adorable red dress with like a gas mask and then underneath like a horrifying little screaming face like she's just love that for her. Okay, I did this on a rerouted operetta. I used operetta because when I was looking through my collection of like dolls I could use that like still had a painted face but had like messed up hair. This one had like a really bad haircut that her previous owner had given her so I was like she won't mind. So yes, she still has her original face but doesn't really matter that much. I just gave her yarn hair in the way that I always do and gave her like little red ribbons. I will also put like a side-by-side -side comparison picture if you want to see and we'll like end with that as well. But her gas mask, I will go into how I made it and also prototypes and trials and errors and things that like if you are looking to make a similar one might be of interest to know. Her gas mask is made out of like tape with little eyelets and like a straw and like another piece of straw and a lot of electrical tape. Her dress buckles in the back with like a little snap and like a little eye and fang, I think it's called. And I made the dress with just little lace bits that I had lying around and also this red velvet that I bought for Oh, a project when I wanted to make like a big red cross on a shirt. I didn't make her bloomers, but I probably will at some point because her skirt is quite short. And I know Molly's original socks are quite a bit shorter than these, but I really like the look of taller socks on Monster High dolls. So that's why I did them kind of like 
calf length. And then yes, these are her shoes, handmade by me. This is the first time I've made Monster High shoes that I've been like, okay, these are actually like cute. So thank you very much. And I forget the channel name of who created the tutorial, but thank you so much. Thank you for making that tutorial. It took me quite a few tries, but I think it was well worth it in the end. I hope that this tutorial can be helpful. I rambled for long enough, um, so let's get into it. <laughs> so we're starting by taking just a regular plastic straw, unscrunching it, and then using some silver paint. I'm using silver enamel paint and just painting a thin layer over the entire thing. With enamel paint, I'd give it at least 24 hours to dry and I'm just setting it to the side. Next, we're taking a piece of just regular electrical tape and using our doll's face as a measurement for it. We're just gonna be folding it in half, uh, roughly the length of the doll's face or a little bit longer so you have some wiggle room and using a silver pencil to mark where the mouth hole is and taking a tiny pair of nail scissors to cut out half a little hole. We're making two of those little black folded over strips. We can line them up and with a separate piece of black tape, attach them more securely together, leaving a spot for the mouth apparatus. We're taking a straw just to make sure that it can fit through the mouth hole we've made and trimming it more if it doesn't fit. This kind of tape is pretty flexible though, so you should be okay. Taking our doll again and placing the mask over her face and using a silver pencil again to trace out where it's going to start and end from her temple to her chin. We're also marking a little spot in the indents where her eye holes will go. Once we have everything marked down, we can cut little holes for the eyes. I like to make almost little crosses. I find this is the easiest way because we're gonna be putting little grommets in there. And I'm just using small grommets that I found at Michael's. You don't actually have to close them. If you're worried about scratching up your doll's face paint, you can. In my future iterations, I did not close them, but for this one, you know, we do it just for the sake of things, but absolutely not a necessary step. And then you can take them out and reuse the grommets for something else if you end up not liking the gas mask. To give it a little bit of a better shape, we're trimming a little seam where we can fold it over near the temples and kind of in the jaw area where the corner of the mask sort of is. And then we're taking our electrical tape again and rolling out quite a long piece of it and folding down just a little piece of the top of it. You wanna leave enough of the sticky side exposed that you'll be able to comfortably fit it around the mask because this is gonna shape it better. Now with this, I used one continuous piece of tape, but this does make the mask go in quite more dramatically. With previous prototypes, I cut little strips of the tape and not only was this easier to apply, but it made the mask lie a little bit flatter. So if you're finding that your mask is way too curved, try to not use one long continuous piece of tape and instead use little bits and just trim as you go to make sure that everything isn't overlapping. Don't forget to take out your doll and measure it on her face to make sure that everything is still fitting. Next it's time to work on the mouth apparatus. So to make a little stabilizer portion for it, I'm taking a piece of electrical tape and then cutting slits all the way up into that and then I'm wrapping it around the straw that I've painted before. And you do wanna make sure you're using a straw that's completely dry, no paint left sticky on it, otherwise you're gonna just make a mess and have to start over. And then my camera cut out, I'm literally just sticking the straw through the mouth hole and flattening those little tabs down. They're already tape, so they're sticky. And then in the back of the mask, I just stick a bunch of hot glue around the mouth piece to make sure that it stays really secure in there. Next, I'm taking a quite a bigger straw, like a boba straw or something of that size, and then using a black piece of electrical tape to cover the outside of it, just going ahead and trimming all around the outside. I also stuck a little eyelet at the top of the straw. I hadn't tried this before, but I last minute did. Put a bunch of hot glue on the eyelet, and I just slide my taped up black straw over the silver straw, and then once the glue is completely dry, I trim the straw, and then add a little bit more hot glue to the part that I just trimmed, and then put a little piece of black tape over that, and then use nail scissors to trim that, so we have a nice clean bottom. I was finding the mouthpiece of the gas mask wasn't sitting correctly, so I decided to just take a little piece of wire and insert it inside so I was more easily able to manipulate how it would pose making sure it's still fitting. Then I can take a piece of elastic string. I guess you could use an old elastic hairband if you don't have elastic string. And after just measuring around the doll's head how long I needed it to be, I attach it to the gas mask with just some hot glue. And I had just made another long strip of folded over tape that I had cut into almost like a curved shape. And I literally just tape that to the top it's just supposed to be the little head strap and I'm not adjusting it until it's actually on the doll because I didn't want to make it like 
permanently looped into anything. And then it's just a matter of getting it over her giant pigtails. But otherwise, it's done. Um, pretty good, pretty easy, fairly reasonably priced materials, and I think it ends up looking pretty cool. I will go into my kind of process with it and prototypes, sort of failed experiments that came before this. But anyway, uh, let's get into that, and I hope that it was helpful so far. This is kind of the final product, but in order to get here, since I really couldn't find a single tutorial on how to make dog gas masks, except for like kind of half gas masks, it took a lot of trial and error. So in order to learn from my mistakes, I kept my previous errors. So I have like a little box of gas masks that didn't quite work out, but were a good learning experience that like we can talk about. So should we start with prototype one? And yes, as usual, feel free to skip if this is of zero interest to you, but if you want to kind of finagle the tutorial I end up showing, maybe this would be helpful to know. For the first mask, we used two pieces of tape, and I was worried that the straw wouldn't hold paint quite well, so instead I used a piece of wire that I wrapped around a kind of chopstick and then kind of put it inside. Uh, the tubing I made in the regular way. Uh, one other thing that's kind of interesting about the first prototype is that I added glass in the eyes. However, for a doll of this size, you don't really see the glass kind of beads in the eyes, so I found it not worth it. I tried using ribbons to fasten the doll because I was thinking that elastics might not be stable enough on there, but ribbons were just way too much of a hassle to tie, so I would really recommend trying to go with elastics if possible. The second prototype, I decided to use a straw but then also put wire on top of that, so if you're wanting to go for like a more metallic look, this is a good option for you. For this prototype, I also tried to stitch down the side. I did this when the two pieces of tape were folded in half, and if you are looking for a more vintage or like handmade Plague Doctor mask look, you could use a more kind of fabric material and add the stitching, or just use the tape material and add the stitching, and it can give you that kind of vintage or like kind of more horror, kitschy, campy look. In general, I thought that the gas mask looked better without the wire overtopped, so I removed that from the future iterations as well as the stitching. I just didn't find that worked. I did start implementing elastics and I find that these are wonderful. The next prototype, this was without the wire over top of the tube. Uh, this is just a painted straw. I believe this is just regular paint, regular acrylic paint, and I don't love it. It doesn't give the shine that it quite could have, so we needed to kind of figure out something different for that. So then I used enamel paint on this one and also added, or tried to add, this one's too short, but I added like kind of a head strap on the back. The enamel paint gave a much better look to the straw in my opinion, so I would recommend going with enamel paint if you can. If you can't, I would just recommend doing multiple layers of acrylic. Then I wanted to experiment with cutting some different shapes for the gas mask to make it more molded to the doll's face shape. So some different iterations that I tried. On the sticky note is drawn how I cut the tape in half, and then attached is the mask that resulted. So basically, I, this is the mouth hole. This is like meets at the forehead where like the two pieces pinch together. And this mask ended up like this. For a Monster High doll, this curvature is just like way too much for the face, so I decided not to go with that. But if you tried like a less dramatic version of this, it might be helpful to like kind of create a slant on the forehead. However, I used a different technique, which I think ended up working better. This was a similar attempt. This is the mouth hole. In this case, I kind of curved the forehead pieces and tried to join them together, but this created an even more dramatic curve to the mask, as you can tell, which is just a lot for a Monster High doll. But if you like this look, I just do want to say that it is an option. If you prefer this kind of highly curved mask over what I show, which is a little easier to cut and do, but I don't know, maybe. And then this was the final mask. This is the mouth hole. This is kind of where the eye is and you poke the eyelid in here. And it's very flat. Don't really like how this turned out. And it's way too small for the doll face, even with the added layer that I tend to add in any case. Next, we can do a side-by-side -side comparison of enamel paint on the top, this one, 
versus acrylic paint. As you can tell, the enamel just looks much more metallic, much more realistic, just a lot better, but you know, do what you can with what you have. The last thing I will say is I use electrical tape in this video, but if you are trying to make this for a larger doll, A, I don't know what you'll use for a straw, you'll probably just have to use the wire method, but it is what it is, but you can use kind of bigger Gorilla Tape, or if you don't like the idea of like cutting this kind of tape and having the seam and stuff, you can just use this instead. But I'm using small electrical tape because I find it gives that really awesome latexy look that I was trying to mimic the original Toxic Molly has. Okay, so <laughs> I also feel like this cosplay needed a gas mask, um, but I don't have one of those. So I hope that you will forgive me for just having a sort of makeup look that's inspired by the gal herself. And that's all I got for now. I really, really appreciate you hanging out with me today and taking some time to watch my tutorial. So uh, yes, I really, really appreciate that. Hope you enjoyed and hope this was helpful. Would love to know that maybe some of y'all's dolls are ready for the apocalypse and have their little gas masks on. We can have all our little like post-apocalyptic dollies be like ready for the zombies together or whatever toxic molly is going for. I don't know. Regardless, I really hope you enjoyed or found this helpful. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day or night or whenever you happen to be watching, and I hope to catch you in the next one. See you later, and bye for now.